this video is on lots of leaders, very little leading going on. Uh, it sort of is a parallel universe to an, a similar, almost identical video that I could do on uh, why the elites of the last 40 years in the United States are evil. And then who generates our elites, basically the top 10 colleges, and why they, the top 10 colleges of America universally generate evil people. Um, and then why the, they choose evil faculty. And, uh, and they didn't, you know, of course, they didn't sit down and have a committee and say, let's choose evil people. They defined uh, best for them and best in terms of uh, graduates and curriculum uh, in ways that uh, selected for evil people being admitted over others evil faculty being admitted over others, and evil results being generated by faculty over others, and evil people being graduated over others. Uh, and I'm sure they will deny responsibility for this, or even knowledge that it's happening. And uh, we have lots of good people who graduate, oh yes, you know, these other people are the rare bad apples. Sort of like CEO speak, you know. It was just seven people down there in some department, and I, I'm, you know, doing the big picture. I don't notice seven people violating enormous laws and uh, losing $9 billion, that's a little final detail that we CEOs get paid hundreds of millions of dollars for not knowing anything. <laughs> so let's look at this, leadership. Lots of leaders, very little leading going on. Number one, uh, the, the most popular regime in the world for delivering leadership functions, and there are 64 basic leadership functions, if you ask people who are greatly led and people who are nominated as great leaders, um, the most popular regime for delivering those functions is a fixed inventory. And fixed inventory, a fixed inventory in this case of people, not of TV sets. And fixed inventory regimes all over the world suffer from simultaneous too much inventory and simultaneously too little inventory at the same time. And so you end up with too much leading going on everywhere and too little leading going on everywhere. Uh, because you're using this fixed inventory of people, a specially designated social class with better parking, better cafeteria, better clothes, better wives, better lovers, uh, better schools for their kids, better uh, stock options, better everything than the crummy, shitty people that they manage. Uh, while they keep giving little bromides of, you know, it's our people who make us great, and that's why we pay them one four thousand, what we get paid because we are 4,000 times more important than they are. But they're important too, but just not 4,000 times as important as we are. Um, and so it's sort of a puzzle why you would uh, del choose to deliver leadership functions via a regime that achieves uh, people looking leaderly, so that is uh, interfering with everyone else's work uh, for the sake of status displays and status rituals like the average staff meeting or the boss getting angry if you don't reply to his email within 24 hours. So these little monkey displays of tantrums, of the little monkey wanting his status recognized a dozen times a week. I saw the vice chairman of GE for Asia start a speech by saying openly in English words how much less smart he was than the chairman of GE, and he's doing this at the age of 59 or 60. I mean, it's pure monkeyism. He's so insecure, he still has to kiss up as the first one minute of his speech, and in, and in a grovelly little way, a disgusting little monkey display of, you know, the chairman is really smart and I just follow his lead, <laughs> the little monkey says. And, you know, it, it just showed how much vertical culture GE has and therefore why they haven't been uh, as successful after Jack Welch gutted the company for the sake of his present bonuses. Um, and became the CEO of CEOs because he showed everybody how to gut the, the, the future for the sake of the present, the American way. Not the American way that people have in their image from high school textbooks, but the American way of the evil elites that have ruined the country the last 40 years. Now, and all of this is explained in Ellis Woldavsky and Tom's and Ellis's book on uh, culture theory about how four political cultures from individualist to communal evolve into each other as the uh, post-World War II generation felt they could do no wrong and mistakes had no harmful effects. America ended up on top of everything without much effort. And uh, even though their systems were inferior to the Germans in almost every way and the Japanese in some ways, and then boom, uh, that uh, unearned victory 
uh, made them deduce that they could do anything they want, and then you end up with uh, just the foulest elites imaginable in history. So we have this system of a fixed inventory of managers, specially designated social class called managers, and they simultaneously do monkey games to, because they got nothing better to do, to look leaderly, and then they don't lead. Rather, they shift the topic and the agenda to what they are already good at, and they avoid topics they're not good at. And since they aren't assessed on uh, uh, things except the highly visible stuff that, they, that catches the attention of upper managers, who are generally, I mean, let, let's look at it this way. Xerox is head of executive information computing privately told me that on a keystroke basis, and he collected keystroke data, that he had never, ever had keystroke data from a, and a Xerox executive that used that information system to look up Xerox data. Not a single keystroke. They only used it look, to look up their personal investment portfolio's worth hour by hour during the day. So here was a $20 million a year computer system paid for by the corporation, used by the executives to not improve the corporation's performance or even look it up <laughs> to check how wealthy they were five times a day. Uh, that's the degree of verticalness in these big American corporations and the kind of monkeys that Harvard generates. Not human beings, but just little status-oriented, I want to be richer than you monkeys. Number two, are there better ways to deliver leadership's basic 64 functions that actually deliver some of those functions than a fixed inventory of little monkeys' uh, social class? Nordic Europe regularly outperforms uh, per capita the United States and yeah, most of the countries there for quite a long time, for de de decades now. Uh, so you got to look at Northern Europe. Japan regularly outperformed North American elites for 20, 25 years and then collapsed. And so you got to look at that 20 year period in Japan. What, hell, what the heck did they do? So there are periods that just blow right by the United States, especially in the last 30 years. And um, how did they do it? And how did they actually deliver the primary function of leading, which is directedness? Okay, then number three. What is the primary product of leading? It's a thing called directedness, and you can measure it at the every work group, every employee level. You can measure it with supply chains. You can measure it with customer chains. You can measure it with technology chains. You can measure it with competitor chains. How much directedness is the company delivering to people and are particular leaders and executives delivering? And you find almost none, really, almost none. It's just breath. It takes your breath away. Now, you measure Japanese companies in quite a bit of directedness in some, but not most. And you measure European companies in almost zero everywhere. And Americans, you know, minus, actually minus figures occasionally. Uh, and zero on average. So we, the current leadership regimes we have is delivering no directedness to people. Uh, but that's just one of the 64 basic functions that they're not delivering. Um, and then what are we, what are we delivering? Point four. Uh, the leadership noise is what we're delivering. Performance cultures make the little monkeys look busy and look like they're under me, status wise. Performance cultures uh, create leadership noise, and you would be, um, it's just incredible. I went to the opening uh, business conference at the Ritz Carlton Tokyo three, four years ago when it first opened. We had 500 business leaders invited, invited business leaders. And uh, using a little bit of connection, I got myself invited, even though they really regretted it at the end. Um, and uh, <laughs> we had Bloomberg and all the little psychophant press there. To hear the insights of the leaders, oh, business leaders, oh, it's like the little CNN people, just their tails wiggling with excitement that I got to talk to a CEO face to face, exclusive. Talk to a CEO. Well, how's your company doing? Has it ever done anything wrong? Oh no, we don't do things wrong. We're nice people, and we're making money. We're helping the world. Oh really? Uh, uh, tell me how you're helping the world. Oh, well, I read in this New York Times you did something bad. Tell me about that. Oh, that's you know distorted reporting by the New York Times. We don't do anything bad. <laughs> and they wiggle their little ass and they're so excited. I talked to a big shot. I talked to a big shot. I'm going to the World Economic Forum. I'm going to talk to five big shots in five days. And I'm glad their little life has meaning. <laughs> but it's a pitiful monkey display. And such a vertical culture, American culture. You just gotta, you gotta wonder where all the bananas are coming from. It's just incredibly embarrassing. So what they do generate is leadership noise and you have constant noise in. 
newsletters and speeches by everybody about leaders, leaders. Now, the, the breathtaking thing about these big corporations is they're 99% followers. So all these people talking about leadership are followers. The vice chairman of GE kisses butt to the chairman for the first full minute of his speeches in Asia to make sure everybody understands, I am a subordinate monkey, and I will not overthrow the chairman. He is my great leader. He is smarter than me, so I will never overthrow him. I am. I know my status. That's the first minute of his speech to an audience here in Asia. I am a monkey. I am a good monkey. <laughs> you can rely on my bananas. Uh, so what are they delivering? They're delivering, I mean, constant noise about leadership by people, none of whom are leaders. They're all followers. That's the trick. That's what good CEOs do. They trick everybody subordinate to them into constantly talking and thinking of themselves leading while all they really got to do is follow what the CEA says. And the CEO says, do stuff that distracts you from the fact that I'm ripping off $200 million a year in bonuses from this company while his performance goes to hell. <laughs> Then lots of leaders, little leading, and no directedness is sort of my summary fifth point here. Um, and so you really see in our era, in our civilization, monkiness has just replaced actual worth. And where did all this ability to supplant actual value and worth with monkeyness come from? It was not there in my grandfather's generation. I mean, you had some people, of course, in all of history who did that. But it wasn't the dominant paradigm of the elite of America then. And it became that after World War II. Now, Ellis, Waldeski, and Thompson have their own theory in the book, Culture Theory, their own theory of this, of how these cultures evolve into each other, um, how the successful individualist culture uh, creates disaster after disaster until it becomes communal, and how the successful communal culture creates uh, competence and competence until it becomes individualist, which is what happened to Japan. Uh, so that's one theory. But the, the other theory is that the top colleges in America hired evil faculty. They designed evil curriculum, uh, disingenuously, you could call it, that it turned out to have evil effects as their main effect. And then they generated uh, hordes of evil psychopathic elites going into institutions. And the purpose of the institution is to enrich me personally. And that's the ethos and the value and the habits of the faculty who taught who selected the psychopaths like that to get into their programs, MBA and otherwise in doctoral medical schools. And then I mean, the dean of the University of Chicago Medical School a few generations ago had lunch with me and said to my face, it has been over 30, 35 years since I've met a single student at our medical school who in any way would attend or pay attention to a, a client or a, a patient's needs. And when we have courses on uh, taking care of patients, we have to find a smaller closet because no one signs up or shows up. And we have a course in any way related to personal wealth building. Uh, we have to get a football stadium because everybody we got signs up for that. So this is not a small, subtle thing that green is distorting. This is a giant dominant culture of the psychopaths who select students, the psychopathic students that they select to educate, the SAT GRE tests that test for psychopathology, and then the psychopaths generated that then run institutions into the ground and destroy civilization. So it's not subtle, it's not small, it's not marginal, it's not a few bad apples. It's the main, it's McNamara. 800 needed to get into Harvard Kennedy School when he got in, 800 math GREs, 800 now today needed to get into Kennedy School now. They, the psychopaths and the faculty select psychopathic students, make them more psychopathic, send them out of institutions to psychopathically rip off the world. And the evidence is $13 trillion of lost money. 40% of the American middle class wealth evaporated due to these wonderful leadership by these elites in 2008. So the data is not subtle. And if you are denying it, then you are obviously one of the little evil psychopaths trained by these places. Um, and there are a lot of them running around. So, you know, leadership, uh, Alvin Toffler dealt with this in an uh, inadequate way when he just said that our problems were more complex than our brains were. And maybe the gap got so big that the effects became actually evil. And you go back and you read uh, Adolf Eichmann in Jerusalem, written by Hannah Arendt, and you see how this happened in Germany a long time ago, uh, after World War I, where the competence turned into evil of the elites. The professional professions and professional knowledge and style and tools turned out to be hiding places for psychopaths. And you wonder whether it's happened again in the Anglo cultures. Uh, 
but particularly, particularly England and America. It's worth thinking about seriously and doing something about changing the psychopath's 